I get it. You're seeing headlines that people are going to lose their jobs. AI is going to take over the world. Even software engineers are not safe. AI will replace the need for people. AI can build full stack apps and all the layoffs recently doesn't help. I understand it's making you question your career choices. I work as a staff engineer and I have heard my coworkers and my friends who've been working as engineers in big companies as well worried about what, what's going to happen to their job. You're not alone in feeling this way. In this video, I'm going to give you my advice on how to prepare for AI taking over the world as we may call it. Hello everyone, my name is Shruti Kapoor. I have been a software engineer for over a decade now. I worked at companies like PayPal and Slack and so far I was super confident that even 25 years from now I will be needed, my job will be safe. Software engineers will never have a problem in this market. But today with the advent of AI, I would be lying if I said that I wasn't scared, that I wasn't afraid what's going to happen to my job especially with the advent of things like AI agents that can do all of the stuff for you and for tools that help you build an app with just vibe coding so that you don't even have to lift a finger to write a full stack app. Heck, these apps have front end and back end and full scale working solutions. I made a whole video talking about what is vibe coding and how to build a vibe coding app. So check that out here. But in this video, I want to unpack whether AI is really going to take over your job as a software engineer and how you can do to prepare and what you can do to stay ahead. Let's get started. Here's my opinion. AI will change things. AI will likely change the way you work, but it is unlikely that it will totally replace software engineers or the job that you do. If you adapt, you will be ready to face the new era of AI revolution. I like to think of AI as the advent of technology when industrial revolution happened or when computers were invented. If you look back at the industrial revolution, when we invented machines like steam engines and factories, there was a huge increase in productivity. But a lot of people lost their jobs. People who worked manual labor. However, that loss in job was replaced by new industries like manufacturing, railroads, and engineering. Same way in the 1950s to 2000s when computers were invented, a lot of people who were working in the industries lost their jobs, but a lot of new industries came up such as IT, software engineering, and many repetitive tasks disappeared, like people who were manually filing, or human clerks, or human calculators, or file clerks. But we replaced them with software, and therefore, even though a lot of people lost their jobs, a lot more jobs were created. And even today, we know that today planes can fly easily on autopilot once they have taken off. But we need somebody to take off the plane and land the plane and take over the plane in emergency situations. I like to think of AI as the autopilot in a plane. The plane can fly completely okay on autopilot, but we still need a pilot who can take care of takeoff and landing and also in emergency situations. I think that's what software engineers are going to transition into as well. Looking back at this industrial revolution and computer revolutions, humans who have adapted and changed according to the new change in technology have thrived. And that's exactly where we are today with AI. One thing I like to do is that I like to take a look at the jobs currently and see what people are looking for and that helps me understand which skills I should start preparing for. So let's take a look at some of the jobs that are posted currently. First is this front-end engineer job for DoorDash, um, New York, San Francisco, Sunnyvale, Seattle, so US market. Now I'm going to show you what is that they're looking for. Um, you're excited about this opportunity because you will fight for the best customer experience, write robust code, become product owner. We're excited about you because you have BS, MS, PhD, two plus years of relevant experience. Now given this is actually for all teams, which means it's a general role. Um, which basically means that it is a senior staff, uh, which is a um, mid-level engineer to a staff engineer role. So, um, understanding of cross-browser cross compatibility, progressive enhancement, and graceful degradation, nothing to do with AI, responsive design, website performance, and accessibility. So you see what they're looking for. Responsive design, website performance, and accessibility. 
experience architecting large scale front end applications. Again, keeps you relevant even in the AI field, but even without it, you need to have experience architecting large scale front end applications. Mastery of the foundations, vanilla, HTML, CSS. They're not even talking about React so far. Deep understanding of REST principles and experience working with and implementing backend APIs, experience with React Redux or similar frameworks, experience with documentation. So the main thing that stood out to me, website performance and accessibility, architecting large scale applications and mastery of foundations. Let's take a look at another one. Now, this is a, this is a hybrid type of role. Um, the first one I showed you was a pure software engineering, pure front end. This is a more AI with software engineering. So let's take a look at this. This is with Vercel AI SDK team. So um, what are they looking for? Uh, you'll be building a TypeScript toolkit for building AI native products and agents. What you will do, build AI SDK, contribute to the design, implementation, and maintenance of AI SDK, ensuring it means high performance standards, conduct compre comprehensive testing to ensure the reliability of the SDK, collaborate with cross-functional teams, including product managers, designers, infrastructure experts, engage with the open source community, actively gather feedback. Okay, so far, so good. About you, you have five plus years of experience, strong proficiency in JavaScript, TypeScript, and experience with modern front-end frameworks, Again, they did not mention any specific framework, but it's proficiency in uh, JavaScript, TypeScript. Experience contributing or participating in open source projects, excellent communication skills. So far, nothing about AI. But one thing to note is, again, focus on fundamentals of JavaScript and TypeScript. Cool, awesome. That's great to know because so far nobody, even though this is the AI team, they haven't asked for AI experience, at least in the res, at least in a job posting. But let's take a look at another one. Now this one is full stack developer AI and LLM. This is with NVIDIA. So I expect that this would be a lot more focused on AI. Uh, what you'll be doing, study and develop groundbreak techniques in deep learning graphs, machine learning and data analytics and perform in-depth analysis, collaborate with developers and cross-functional teams to identify current and emerging challenges, design and implement end-to-end -end generative AI solutions, specializing in LLMs, tra LLM training, efficient deployment strategies, and sophisticated drag workflows. This is where the AI bit comes in. So again, what are they interested in? Design and implement end-to-end -end generative AI solutions, specializing in LLMs, training, efficient deployment strategies, and sophisticated RAG workflows. What you need to know is MS with six plus years of software or two plus years relevant work experience, proven full stack development experience with a focus on improving application performance and user experience, proficiency in Python, C++, programming, and deep learning frameworks. So if you are somebody who wants to get deep into the AI field, I think this is a really good job posting to know. Proficiency in Python, C++, programming, and deep learning frameworks. Also, NVIDIA is a little bit different than other framework, other uh, places because they, are, because they are a lot more on the low-level programming instead of high-level programming. So that's why they have Python and C++. Uh, ability to work independently, self-starter, ability to balance multiple things. Da -da -da. Okay, ways to stand out from the crowd. I love that they have written this as well. Experience, experience with CUDA programming and benchmarking and analyzing performing AI agentic systems. I haven't even done CUDA programming. Uh, experience for analyzing performance AI agentic systems. So not just how to know AI, how to build AI agents, but also analyze their performance. Experience in training, fine tuning, and evaluating LLMs using popular frameworks such as TensorFlow and PyTorch. Proficiency in model deployment and optimization techniques for efficient inference on various hardware platforms. Experience with NVIDIA GPUs and software libraries like da da da. Proficiency in model deployment and optimization techniques for ex efficient inference on various hardware platforms. So, cool. This is a very AI focused uh, role. So, as you can see, a lot of focus on proficiency, a lot of focus on AI deployment strategies, sophisticated RAG, specializing in LLMs. I hope this exercise was helpful in understanding what are the job skills that currently companies are looking for. I recently went to Epic Web Conference in Salt Lake City, Utah, organized by Kenzie Dots and team. And I spoke to the speakers at the conference to ask their opinions on what they think AI will replace engineering. And here's what they thought. Let's take a look at some clips. I think it'll change our jobs, but maybe not necessarily lose them. But it's getting pretty good at moving, so we gotta figure that out. AI in web dev will do two things. One is it's gonna eliminate a bunch of jobs, which is bad. The second thing is it's going to make a bunch of new jobs, which is good. The problem is most of the new jobs won't go to juniors trying to get into the field right now. 
Yeah. That kind of sucks for a bunch of people I know. But yeah, and also with time, our jobs are also going to be removed. But I am just hoping it's not soon. So here are the jobs that I think are at risk today and in the next two years. First of all, data entry clerks. I feel like this is something that can be easily automated by AI. Basic customer support, we can. We are already seeing that chatbots and AI bots are currently replacing them. And with the help of even advanced agentic chatbots, I think that that is gonna, the number of jobs and customer support are gonna reduce. Telemarketers, again, and one thing that I wanna talk about is simple feature developers. And this is people who are developing simple UIs that are just doing like a very basic UI implementation, a very basic UI job like opening a drop down and sending a form, um, creating a list, rendering it on the page. So very simple UIs. I think those, jo those jobs and those codes are gonna be replaced by AI code gen tools. And then finally, graphic designers. We're already seeing that AI tools like Midjourney and Canva AI uh, and Sora can already create videos for you. So I think those jobs are gonna reduce as well. Here are the jobs that I think are safe because of the creative thinking, the emotional intelligence, and the critical thinking that's part of these jobs. And if you are somebody who was in the previous list, I would highly encourage you to start moving to this list. So we talked about simple graphic design and simple coding, so let's talk about them first. I think that, I think people who are designing currently are gonna upscale into creative strategists and people who are gonna be telling the entire story of the, of the product, helping the companies with their branding and helping generate a voice of the product. People who are developing small applications or simple UIs are going to graduate into becoming complex software engineers, people who maintain a large code base, people who think about the architecture of the application and help in the product thinking and the system design overall. There's also lots of trades that currently have skilled trades like construction and hands-on that involve hands-on unpredictable work. Similarly, in the work in healthcare, we need doctors, we need who have empathy, we need people who have the correct judgment, who can look at the results and still understand what it means and how to relate that information and which diagnosis to choose and somebody who can verify that information. And I think doctors and healthcare professionals are definitely gonna be needed in the future. And finally, a new field that's coming up is people who understand AI and people who can build AI applications and people who can fine tune LLMs and train LLMs and people who can build agenting applications and applications that use RAG. And I've grouped all of that into AI engineers. I think this is a new career that's going to pop up and a lot more people are going to become some or the other form of AI engineers. So I would say, Wherever creativity and critical thinking is essential and emotional intelligence is important, humans are going to stay relevant. Here's how you can do to prepare yourself. If you're a software engineer who is on software engineer one to two level, and you're building components that can then fit into the rest of the app, and these components either consume an API or render data and don't really do a lot, move from just implementing features to problem solving of the entire application. Take on projects that let you not only build small features, but also understand how multiple features are gonna work together. The reason being AI can replace building those small features, but AI will not replace the human who interacts with this entire application and understands how those different features work together. Number two, it is important that you level up your skills from just building components and features and adding endpoints to learning how to scale the application. Even if AI can write all of the code right now and build a full stack application, these applications are not robust enough to be scaled up to millions of customers. As the apps start getting built by AI, we're gonna need more and more software engineers who understand how to take these proof of concept type of apps and build them into production level apps. Third, we're gonna need people who understand how to prompt these AI apps, how to prompt building good applications. So learning prompt engineering is gonna be really helpful for you. And finally, we're always gonna need people who, who can act as a bridge between the code and the product. So if you are somebody who understands how the code works, but also what the product requirements are, so you can feed those requirements into these AI tools, you're gonna be in a much better place, which means 
work on your communication skills, work on your product requirement skills, and learn how to understand the requirements of the project, the gaps of the project, and figure out where those gaps are and how to get answers to those things. And finally, keep learning. The people who survive disruption aren't always the smartest people, but they are the people who are the most adaptable. So remember, tech evolves. It's a natural part of the tech progression, <laughs> but we have to evolve with it. The people who are gonna survive this newest revolution of AI are people who are gonna adapt. So let me know in the comments below, are you feeling excited? Are you scared? Are you doing anything to prepare yourself? And what is the sentiment in your company about AI? And if you want honest advice about how to level up your career, book a one-on-one -on -one mentorship session with me. The link is gonna be in the description. You can book it through TopMate. Thank you for watching this video. And if you're interested in building an AI application, watch this video where I talk about how to build an AI application with free tools. Also, if you're somebody who's not familiar with how to code, watch this video on what is vibe coding to understand how you can get started in building applications without having to write code yourself. Remember, the bamboo that bends with the wind is more stronger and resilient than the oak tree that resists. So be the bamboo.